and we are <laughs> we are here what is up everyone ozzy over here from player essence welcome for the midweek essence sorry about the delay ninja um very quick tip to all of you guys who play or who stream video games a lot it is very important to power cycle your router every other day at least or just like power cycle your router because if you don't and you don't power cycle your router and your modem you're gonna get what happened to me which was just massive drops all over the place i power cycled it and it's just like it's it's so clean right now i'm pretty much moving at maximum efficiency so your boy had to do a little bit of power cycling um that's my fault forgot to power cycle it's probably been about two weeks which is pretty good for not being able to power cycle like if you have like crappy routers um and crappy modems like you can't go like a couple days without power uh power cycling so basically just unplugging the the modem unplugging the router letting it sit for about 10 seconds then plugging everything back in restarting your computer make sure everything runs efficiently um so yeah sorry about that guys terribly sorry about it but um that knocked away about a good 20 minutes from our show here um i do have to pick up my daughter at 135 ish 140 so sorry about that um i'll i might do a bonus live stream uh to make up for it actually you know what how about this to make up for it at the end of this live stream for those who are still here i'll give away a copy of a game that i got but i just have no time uh to play the game uh let me find it in my uh let's see stick it to the um no not web search my inbox how do i search my inbox no wait inbox so yeah i'll give away a copy of a game i just have to find it um maybe i'll find it throughout this live stream at some point <laughs> i'll find it and then when i do find it i'll let you guys know stick it to the man i have a copy of that but i just have I just don't have any time to cover the game. I'm just like swamped with so many different things. So I have a copy of Stick It to the Man. So if I can't find it for this live stream, I'll give it away on Twitter. So make sure you follow me on Twitter um, and I'll give that away. Not only that, but we also hit 35,000 subscribers and over 11 million views on the YouTube channel. So thank you guys so much for uh, making the channel successful at least a little miniature success so um, 35,000 subscribers that's pretty cool remember i'm going to be having a giveaway for the super nintendo mini at 40,000 subscribers so that's also cool so you know we're almost at we're almost at 40,000 which is good which is really good um but anyway uh let's we don't have much time to go over so many of the other little things um just because i knocked out way too much time there so terribly sorry about that guys um so let's go ahead and um audio and video desync okay there's an audio and video desync. Oh, there's a delay. Okay, there's a delay. Hmm. You know, I to be honest, I think YouTube is having issues with that. Give me one second, guys. Hold up. Yeah, if, if there's an audio and video desync issue, um, that's on YouTube. Yeah, that's on YouTube because on mine, I'm not dropping, I haven't dropped a single frame since I started this live stream. So I haven't, I haven't dropped a single frame at all. So yeah, if there's an audio video desync, let me, let me check it out here. Yeah, there's definitely an audio. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely an audio video desync. Um, but yeah, that's not on my end, guys. I'm not liable worthy. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go offline, then go online and see if that fixes it. So give me just a second.
Okay, so you guys can let me know. It should go offline, then it should go back on uh, back online. Is there an audio video desync now at this point? Because if it is, then that's strictly YouTube. That's not on my end because everything's running smooth on my end. Looks good now? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Looks good now. Got it. Fixed. Okay, yeah, so... Just a little bit of an encoding error. Um, YouTube's uh, it's not the best YouTube's technology, but hey, it's all good. Shout outs to uh, what is it? Light, Lightfinny, Lightfinny. Shout outs, man. Thank you so much. Welcome to the village over there, or actually the follow over there on Twitch, the Fire Nation. Thank you so much. Trying to get to a thousand followers on Twitch, so I do appreciate that. Please build up the Fire Nation strong over there on Twitch. And uh, once I get to a thousand, once I get to a thousand followers, I'll actually incorporate Twitch more into it because I mainly stream on YouTube. But um, yeah, I'll actually incorporate the Twitch chat and everything once I get to a thousand followers. And maybe if I get partnered by them, um, then definitely incorporate Twitch more. But thank you so much for building it up, man. I do appreciate that. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get into the news here, guys, because this has been a disastrous show so far. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into some good news. And, and I'll be keeping my eye on the on the chat guys so um, if uh, if you guys say stuff uh, don't worry I'll be I'll be I'll be looking at most of the stuff so so yeah uh, let me go in and let me pop this out let me pop out the chat so I can look at that all right so I'll put that down here and then I'll also go over okay so we'll go over here so okay so the nintendo switch has become the fastest selling home gaming system ever in canada and for those who missed some of this or if you come in late or whatever the case is i'll have another video tonight talking about a lot of this stuff too in my normal pe news video format 10 to 15 minutes so i'll have that as well guys so um so nintendo switch becomes the fastest selling home gaming system ever in canada and here is what pierre paul uh from nintendo of canada had to say he's the general manager and senior director he said the response that the Nintendo Switch has received from Canadians has been nothing short of spectacular. We're thrilled to have have seen such a record-breaking momentum in 2017. So yeah, fastest selling home gaming system ever in Canada. Um, and Nintendo announced earlier this month that Switch has become the fastest selling home video game system ever in the US, which we do have news on that, the MPD, with over 4.8 million units have been sold in the country since launch. So really cool there. Um, obviously Canada is connected, you know, to the U S North America. Um, so yeah, we, I share that we share the, the border up there with our fellow Canadians up North. And the more that, you know, people talk about the differences, the more that most people are pretty much the same, even if you speak a different language or you live in a different area, generally when it comes to gamers, people are generally all the same. Everyone wants great content. Everyone's going to have their opinions in terms of what games they like and what they you know what systems are good and bad or whatever the case is but overall most nintendo fans in general and just most fans you know out there we all we all want the same thing so really even if you can't if you can't speak the language that good or if we speak different languages everybody for the most part we all speak good controls and stuff we all speak uh quality games and that's what everyone wants at the end of the day so whether it's canada or the u.s or uh south america you know brazil or you know portugal or any of the countries there or across the world across the pond to uk or whatever the case is man everyone just wants the same thing for the most part um there's a lot of people out there that are trying to uh distance or not distance but try to break that fabric of just being a gamer and having fun but pay them no mind you know so i'm happy to see that canada you know is definitely picking on to the nintendo switch they didn't give any numbers in terms of actually like how much is sold in canada uh, we recently found out that Germany has over 600,000 Nintendo Switches sold for the year or since launch, which is really good. Um, that's 300,000, about a little bit less than 300,000, um, or actually 300,000. There's about 300,000 more in France than Germany, but France is bigger than Germany from what I understand, so it makes sense. But between Germany and between um, France and Europe, you know, 1.5 million, and then you top on this right here, fastest selling home uh, home gaming system ever in Canada. Really good, really good, um, uh, really good sales. So it's good to, it's definitely good to see that, man. It's definitely good to see that Nintendo's doing well in Canada. Um, where do I live? I live in California, in the United States. That's where I live. Um, so yeah, I thought I made that pretty clear that I live in California, United States. But yeah, maybe if you're new to the channel, I live in good old California. Not only do I live in California, I live right 
in the middle of California. Like, it, it's called the Central Valley. I live right in the... Actually, people call it... People who want to diss where I live, they call it the armpit of California because it's the hottest, stinkiest place um, <laughs> in California. Right in the middle, you know what I'm saying? So, I live in the armpit of California because, yeah, I do live in the hottest and stinkiest place in California. So, uh, but that's okay because rent here is super... Rent and mortgage here is super cheap. You can get a mansion. What many people would consider a mansion, you can get it for a very affordable affordable prices. So I'm going to keep on living right here in the Central Valley, baby. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, man. That mortgage is super cheap, uh, affordable to where I can do something like YouTube and be starting out and not be making the most money, but still afford to pay my, my mortgage and my bills and all that, you know, whereas other places a lot more expensive to live. So I'm fine right here in the Central Valley. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that's that's basically Nintendo Switch dominating in, in Canada. Good stuff there. Good stuff to the Canadians. Shout outs to um, a talkie teacher. Um, okay, Germany has the biggest population in Europe. Okay, my bad on that. Sorry about that. Um, Germany has the biggest population. I'm terribly sorry about that. So France is just more excited. Uh, the French people are just more excited about Nintendo Switch a bit more. But there's more competition in Germany. Like the the PS4 does really good in Germany too. So uh, my bad. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get into a little bit of the Nintendo Labo discussion. We'll talk about that. I have to move a little bit quicker than I usually move, guys. Terribly sorry about this. This has been a horrible live stream so far. Um, but yeah, so Nintendo Labo was announced. And basically what Nintendo Labo is, it's a bunch of cardboard. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just Nintendo's charging us $80 for cardboard. How dare Nintendo? <laughs> this is the worst decision ever. This is horrible. This is going to ruin everything for me. <laughs> uh, no, Nintendo is came out with this whole Labo deal. Uh, they released just a short trailer um, yesterday talking about Labo. I think it was like two minutes and like 30, 40 seconds, something like that. Um, and it kind of set the world on fire just a little bit. I mean, it was number two on trending. Um, it had well over 2.7 million views by like the last time that I looked. Um, and on top of that, Labo um, on Amazon actually reached the number one and number two spots. Now, when I reported on it earlier today, when you guys saw that video about Labo being uh, the number, I think it was number one and number six on Amazon, the, the variety kit actually bumped up to number two. So it's actually the number one and number two on, um, on, on uh, Amazon sales for the U.S., guys, for the U.S. So... Um, it's the thing about Labo, which a lot of people like, not a lot of people, but I would just say some people don't understand is that it's, it's a creation, it's paper craft. It's a creation toolkit for kids, for kids and families to play with. It doesn't affect other things. So if you're not into it, I don't understand some people saying being so up. some, not most people are fine with it. Like most people that have had went hands on. So I think like game explain, uh, the verge, the guardian, big websites, big places knew about this beforehand. And they went hands on, on this, like, like a couple days ago, like right before, you know, Nintendo released this information, they went hands on. So hopefully it wouldn't leak. Although there were people who knew about Labo well in advance. Um, but um, the thing about it is that it's just something different to attract more people to the system. It doesn't affect what Nintendo's doing this year in terms of video games. Trust me, guys, look, I can't say what's coming because obviously that would give away like my sources and stuff, but there's a reason why insiders and there's a reason why people who have leaked stuff before continue to say that Nintendo's going to have a great 2018 for third party and just going to have a great 2018 in general because there are people who know Nintendo's third party lineup. There are people who have sources out there and I've been told just a small slice a small slice of what Nintendo has. And everyone that I've talked to says that this Labo is a good idea because of what Nintendo has as in terms of other stuff for the core gamers um, out there. Everyone says that this Nintendo Labo is good because it's gonna attract other people. And you guys are gonna be shocked with some of the announcements that come from third party developers. So um, like I said, and I know just of a couple titles from like, I know like one, you know, I just don't know like one Square Enix title. I know a couple other titles from like Bandai Namco and stuff like that. I mean. It's stuff that's been rumored, you know, but at the same time, it's, it's stuff that it's it's still like you guys are going to be shocked when it comes. So if Labo isn't your thing, I don't understand why so many people, I don't understand why so many like commenters are like, oh, this is crazy. This is bad. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, then just don't buy it. Like, I think VR is trash. You know, do I sit there and trash VR and go to live streams and mess with people and go to comment sections and complain about VR? No, VR, VR is stupid. I think VR is dumb. Um, but I don't trash it all day. So, um, so yeah, man. 
So, in my opinion, it's a good idea, and the reason why it's a good idea is because it's going to attract more people to the to the Nintendo Switch. As you can see on Amazon, it's already, like I said, number one and number two. So, for me, it's a good business decision. Uh, it's a good idea. And once we actually get more, I mean, we saw Ease, we saw, um, what was it, um, the SNK, Dark Souls, The World Ends With You. I mean, that's just the beginning. That's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to third-party support. There's way more games coming in. Um... So yeah, man. Uh, I mean, it really, I wouldn't even say that the, it's it's a mini direct was for ports and side games. I wouldn't even say that. I would just say like it's just there were new games as well. SNK was also brand new that was announced. Dark Souls has never been to uh, never been on a Nintendo system. Ease Eight that's actually a new game that came that came out just last year. Um, they just took a, they just took a little bit more time to polish it up for the Nintendo Switch. So it's not even like it was completely for old games and ports um, and side stuff. But there was actually new games there as well. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say that. I'd say it was ports and it was also new games. Third party support is very important. Um, Dark Souls has never been on a Nintendo system, so you can call it a port if you want. But if you go back and play it on the Xbox 360, uh, I don't think you want to do that. So it's a brand new game for Nintendo fans. Brand new game on a Nintendo Switch. First time that it's ever been portable. And like I said, SNK Heroines is a brand new game. Um, Ease 8 is pretty much a brand new game. We just, we didn't, we never got it on a Nintendo system beforehand. So there were new games, there were ports, there were both. I mean, just like anything, when you go to E3, there's new games, there's ports, there's everything. So I wouldn't even say it was a direct dedicated to that. It was just a mini direct where they announced new games for people. So, so yeah, man. Um, it is, it, it, it's a port, but at the same time, it's never been on a Nintendo system. And it's actually a, it's actually a remaster. It's actually, it's actually a remaster. Um, and the thing about it is that it's never been on a Nintendo system before, and the original game ran like trash on the Xbox 360. You can call it a port, but the original game ran really bad, and the PC, without mods, the PC version ran really bad too. So you can call it a port, whatever, but the original port didn't run really. It's not, it's not really a good port. <laughs> it's not really a port. I would say it's a complete, it's a complete remake because the original did not run, did not run well at all. At least if you're, I mean, if you're playing it on PS4 and Xbox One X, I mean, you're gonna get. 4K 60 frames per second. It's essentially a whole different game on PS4 and Xbox One X. Like, if you're playing it on there, or if you're playing it on the PC, they're gonna fix it because the original game, if you played it, that game literally runs at anywhere between. It can dip as low, I think, maybe 19 frames per second to it averages 20 something frames. It's a pretty, it's a pretty choppy experience. It might hit 30 at times, but it's pretty, it's pretty choppy. It's not very good at all. <laughs> I played Dark Souls on the Xbox 360, so I mean, if any game needs a port. Or a re it's a remaster it's not necessarily just a port but if any game needs a remaster it's dark souls dark souls is definitely one of those games and once and like i said it's the first time it's ever going portable first time it's ever been on nintendo system i'll take that i mean you can say it's just a port but i'll take it um so yeah man um hopefully they fixed the controls for dark souls the first one was kind of buggy oh uh, well I, I don't think the controls were kind of buggy more so than the, the frame rate and the pacing was off. I think it's more of that more than anything. Not necessarily the controls were buggy. It's the frame rate. And it was the inputs were, were just kind of bad because of the frame rate. So when you press a button, sometimes there was frame delay. Sometimes there was issues. And that's what caused it. Now, and if you have a stable 30 frames per second or a stable 60 frames per second and you redo kind of like the input, the latency and all that, um, then you're going to have, uh, then it's going to be better. Not only that, but I think also there were some issues with HDTVs with that game. Um, so certain HD TVs had more input delay or lag than other TVs. Like there was issues with developing that game on the Xbox 360 and PS3. Just plain and simple, there were issues. There, there were a lot of issues. And they moved over to the Dark Souls 3 engine, uh, not the original Dark Souls 1, because the Dark Souls 1 engine was just, I wouldn't say it was trash, but it wasn't good. Um, they moved over to the Yeebus 3 engine, um, all of the updates. So, I mean, like I said, if, if, if any game needs it, it's that game. Um, I played Dark Souls. I thought it was okay, but I didn't beat it. I mean, I played it for a lot of hours, but I didn't beat it just because I just got kind of tired of, of the issues with the game. So, so yeah. So, I'm definitely going to be picking it up. Um, so, yeah, man. Um, so, let's go ahead and move on to the next topic here. And, guys, stop arguing about everything. Like, Stacona, like, stop arguing about everything, guys. Just relax, okay? Stop making assumptions and arguing about everything. Just, just chill. Um, so we got the next thing here. So Nippon Ichi Software announces Lair Princess and the Blind Prince Project Nightmare and Disgaea remake. So early in the morning for me, at least 6 a.m. for me, 9 a.m. for Eastern folk. Um, Nippon Ichi Software had a very, very tiny Nintendo Direct style presentation 
um, where they talked about um, a number of games. So they didn't give any platforms, which is the, the craziest thing. But look forward to some new games. Um, the biggest thing probably out of this is the Disc Gaia remake. So we're going to be getting a high resolution version of the original Disc Gaia, which is currently in development and will launch in Japan this summer. But platforms were not announced. Now, here's the thing, guys. Um, Disc Gaia, uh, Nippon Ichi, they've always been pretty big since Disc Gaia 5 did really well on the Nintendo Switch. They've had other games, smaller stuff that's done well. They're going to support the Switch, so I really, I mean, I think this game is probably coming to PS4 and Nintendo Switch, maybe PC too, but I think that's really what it's going to come down, it's, it's really what it's going to come down to. Um, so yeah, man. Um, so that's this guy, and that's Nipponichi Software. We're going to have to move on from that just because of the time. So let's go ahead and get into one of the main topics here, guys, and that is uh, the Nintendo Switch December NPD. Uh, the Nintendo Switch sold 1.5 million units in December 2017. The Nintendo 3DS sold 750,000 units. And if you combine the Super Nintendo Mini, Nintendo actually accounted for more than half of all of the system sales um, for the NPD in December. So they were killing it between those three systems. I think Labo is going to be a natural extension of that in terms of that. I think Nintendo is going to try to bracket Labo outside of Nintendo Switch. And kind of count that towards like, hey, this is its separate MPD deal. Maybe we'll see how much it does. But let's go ahead and get into the article here. So various Switch titles also finished high on the charts. Really good sales there. So Nintendo Switch sold more units in December than any other video game system on the United States. Um, shout out to Gamatsu for the article. According to the video game sales tracker MPD Group, Nintendo announced um, a total of 1.5 million Nintendo Switch systems were sold during a five-week period of December. Since its launch on March 3rd, 2016, more than 4.8 million Nintendo Switch systems were sold, making it the fastest selling home console in the United States history. So also the Nintendo 3DS, which a lot of people keep on saying Nintendo needs to kill or like, you know, why they continue supporting it. Um, I think this is the reason why. In December, the Nintendo 3DS sold 750,000 systems plus um, United States, which is a 27% increase over the same period last year. So, if you guys don't know, last year, Nintendo had Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, okay? And they sold around, what, that's a 27% increase, so that's around 500,000 units or something like that they sold, or almost 500,000 units in December last year with Pokemon Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun, or sorry, Pokemon Sun and Moon. So, this year, they have a remaster and less games than they had last year, because last year they had Fire Emblem and some other bigger name games for the Nintendo 3DS, or for the Nintendo 3DS, and they actually sold more in December this year than last year, which is crazy. Um, and now the, the, the sales for the Nintendo 3DS have exceeded 21 million units in the United States, which is pretty good. Not as good as Japan. Japan's ab above that, but still somewhat close. And that's really good. That's really good. So if you're looking at that, you got 21 million users in the U.S. alone. You've got, pro you've got over 70 million users total. You've got sales that i mean 250,000 away from i mean pretty close to top of a million units in december there's no reason for nintendo to just outright drop you know stop making games you know completely um if you have any extra teams or new developers or coders that you're hiring you know they're not quite ready for a nintendo switch title or maybe you have like a small budget you don't have enough for a nintendo switch title you know make get some people together and put put something on a nintendo 3ds you know what i'm saying it, it make it makes sense for them to continue so that's the best business decision for them i don't see them drop the nintendo 3ds anytime soon i mean i think honestly they can probably support the 3ds or even have a couple games a year probably till 2020 man it might be till 2020 it might be till i, I think honestly it could be two three more years just because with sales like this there's no need to stop it i mean the system you know you're selling it for 150 to 200 dollars that's so much profit there's no need man no need to stop it so so yeah man um I, I don't think no i don't the 3ds didn't outsell the ps4 this holiday i uh, know it, it, it didn't well i don't know about that i think i'm pretty sure the playstation 4 sold more than a million i'm pretty sure the playstation 4 sold more than more than uh seven fifty thousand no 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 the 3ds didn't did it outsell the ps4 this holiday season it did it because sony announced that uh the ps4 has sold november through december the ps4 sold like six million units and i'm pretty sure the nintendo 3ds didn't sell six million units in the holiday season from november to december so 
So no, nah, I don't I don't think so. And and I know it didn't outsell it in Europe. I mean, 3DS sometimes outsold the PS4 in Japan, but the but PS4 still sold decently in Japan. It was pretty even. So no, nah, I, I don't think so. Um So yeah, man. Um, so let's go ahead. So what do you guys think about this, man? Get some fan reaction real quick. What do you guys think about the sales so far? Any comments on that? Um, let me look at the, the tracker thing here. Um, shout outs to Nightmoon with the $2 donation through Super Chat and says, some guy donating. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nightmoon. I do appreciate the donation. You didn't give me a music request, though. So if you guys are going to donate, drop a music request in there so we can have some music playing during this stream. So... Um, Nightmoon, if you're still in the chat here, let me know if you want to listen to a certain track. Um, any video game music, non-copyrighted video game music, I'll play. P potentially, I mean, instrumentals, but, you know, just let me know, guys, if you if, if you did. So, uh, no, no, it didn't. No, it didn't, Stakona. No, it didn't. You're, that's, that's, that's not true. The 3DS definitely did not outsell the, the PS4 um, in the holiday season. It didn't. Um, because the reason why uh, it... it it didn't is because Sony announced from November to December, which is the holiday season, the Nintendo the uh, the PS4 sold six million units. The 3DS definitely didn't sell six million units from November to December. So no, it didn't outsell it during the holiday period. I don't know why you keep saying that it did. It didn't. I'm giving you facts, my guy. Come on now, relax, dude. Don't spread fake news on my channel. Don't spread fake news on my channel. It, there's no way that the Nintendo 3DS outsold it during the holiday period, according to Sony's numbers. According to Sony's numbers. Six million and from November to December for the PS4. Um, so yeah, man. Um, so let's go ahead and move on here. The the Xbox One only outsold the PS4. It was barely, but it was just one it was just the NPD. It was just the December NPD and it was barely. And the Xbox One was definitely cheaper. But it, it wasn't enough to where it'd be, like, a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like And, like, it's just one... It's just... The, I mean, the U.S. is the biggest area, like, for video games in the world. But at the same time, like, in Europe, Sony's destroying... Sony's kind of bopping Nintendo and Microsoft in Europe. I mean, like, it's not even... I don't think it's even close in Europe. So, I mean, like, you can sit here and say, Oh, well, the oh, MPD, U.S., you know, P Switch or... You know, Xbox outsold Sony PS4. It's just like, and freaking Europe, freaking Europe with the with some of the highest, you know, um, uh, like let's say conversion rates. You know, as far as valuable value of money, Europe has some of the highest value of money out there, and and the PS4 is doing extremely well worldwide. So I mean, I know we're talking about NPD and everything, but I just I, I don't know. I don't, I don't read too much into. MPD victories, you know what I'm saying? Especially when it's so close, especially when the numbers aren't really like that big of a difference. I don't, like in Japan, the numbers are so skewed for the most part, at least in the holiday season for Nintendo, then I think that's more of a bigger deal than like MPD because it's so close. It's not close, it's not big enough to where you really be a big deal at all, in my opinion, at least. Um, in my opinion. Europeans buy plenty of games. I don't know what you're talking about. You you might be the most the, the hardcore opinionated person that I've ever like. Not not the most, but man, you. I mean, like that's either you're a troll or you're an exaggeration. Europeans don't buy games. That's ridiculous. Sony's uh, a hard, a big amount of games have been sold in Europe. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. The sales for games across the board in Europe have been good. Like have been really good. I don't I don't know what you. I don't know what you're on, man, but you're definitely not on anything that's factual. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, COD sells a lot in uh, sells a lot in Europe. COD, um, Grand Theft Auto. I mean, it's the typical stuff. I mean, yeah, they don't buy as many. Like the variety in a lot of Europe isn't as big as other places, but. I think that they still sell a lot of games. I mean, if you look at the games in France that's been selling, you look at the games in Germany. I mean, obviously people are buying. I mean, if, if 600,000 people got a got a switch in Germany, they're buying stuff. They're buying a lot of different games. I mean, I don't think it's really just anything. But yeah, I mean, the variety could be a little bit better. I think Japan and the US, I mean, I wouldn't even say the US shows a lot of variety. I mean, look at the MPD charts. Outside of Nintendo titles, what's, what's up on the MPD charts for video games? Grand Theft Auto, 
Madden, Call of Duty. Um, you know, it's it's the same stuff too. So I don't think it's really any different here. The same stuff sells in Europe and U.S. The same stuff sells. I mean, in the U.S., Nintendo games sell a little bit better. In Japan, Nintendo games sell a little bit better than Europe. But at the end of the day, the U.S. and Europe they have the same layout of games and of what sells. Um, just like swap FIFA Europe with NBA 2K. You know, like just NBA 2K sells here. You know, whereas FIFA sells more in Europe. So. If it's not one sports game, it's a different sports game, you know? <clears throat> I wouldn't say Switch doesn't appeal to Europe as much as other regions. Switch is doing extremely well in Europe. It's just, there's just more competition. That's all it is. It's just, there's just more competition um, in Europe compared to, in terms of what people like. So I wouldn't say, because like Nintendo's doing really well in Europe. They're doing really well. Like I said, I talked about, you know, uh, over, over, what was it? 911,000 in France alone for the year and then also 600,000 plus in Germany for the year and the Nintendo switches I mean the UK Nintendo's doing a lot better in the UK than they did before but there's just more competition in terms of what gamers like I mean I don't think I wouldn't say it doesn't appeal as much it's just it's just more it's kind of balanced out a little bit more than more so than anything PlayStation obviously is the doing the best there but I don't really think it's not even doesn't appeal as much. I mean, European sales have been great. I don't think they're bad at all. Um, just because one region doesn't do as much as another region doesn't mean, oh, it doesn't appeal as much. Like, what's going on here? I wonder why there's something wrong. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. It's just it, it's just how it is. It's just how it is in certain regions, man. Um, no, no, no biggie. Um, shout outs to George. Um, I probably I can't pronounce this last name. Amalo? Amilo? Uh, shout out for the $2 donation. It says, hey, OJ, keep it up. Great channel. Can you play um, I'm Fine Ace Attorney? Thanks. Uh, yeah, no problem. I can play that. Um, so you said um, Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney. I'm fine. Okay. Is that Dual Destinies? or Because there's all sorts of stuff. But maybe it's this one. Okay. Apollo Justice, I'm fine. Okay. All right. I like it. Nice and mellow. Oh, yeah, I like this one. Okay. Oh, dual. Oh, you want the dual destinies. Okay. Okay, this is Spirit of Justice. Sorry. Sorry. Let me go to Dual Destinies. Okay, this one's just a little bit more. A little bit different. Okay. Hey, I, I like this one. Okay. I do like this one. No, there's a little bit of difference between the two. A little bit of difference between the two. Shout out to Kuro Tengetsu91 with the two dollar donation. It says Sona mi aru i sankitu, please. Okay, I'll be next after this one. This one's about two minutes, and then we'll and then we'll play the other one. Okay. So what, okay, so basically we're gonna round out this one here, guys. Like I said, it's not gonna be too long here. Uh, if you guys have questions, let me know, and I'll answer as many questions as I can. Um, so yeah, man. So you guys let me know about that, and uh, we'll see what we can do here. What's the update on the Toby skit, OJ? Um, the update on the Toby skit is that I'm working on the script for it, um, but I think I need my brother here in order to do it. But I'm, I'm, I wanted to make it bigger. So basically, I'm a little bit of a writer's block on it, I guess, because I did the script and I thought it was cool, but it, it seemed too much like my other Toby skits. So I wanted to incorporate someone else, but I don't have anyone else to help me. 
Uh, so I'm thinking about waiting before it, but we'll see, guys. I might just do something kind of different. You know, maybe just like a little mini Toby skit. So don't expect anything like super long. Maybe expect something like during like a, a video or something like that. But yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Because like I said, it started out small and then it got bigger. And then I realized that I need someone else. And then like my mind's kind of going crazy. So, so yeah. So I'm working on it, basically. <laughs> I'm working on it. What's the song called? This is, um, this is I'm Fine. Um, Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies, I'm Fine. So, so yeah, that's the name of the song. Um, so yeah, so now we have the next song here, and that is, and I'll get to questions right now, guys. Uh, Sona, oh, this long one here, I can't say it correctly. Let me see if I can put it into here. Sona. Okay, is this light? Oh, okay, Prince of Dragoon Order. Okay. Got it. It looked like since for a second. Um, when do you think, like, the direct will be? What direct? If anything, Nintendo's gonna do, like, in a few months, they'll do something? What up, Jeffrey? How's it going, man? We want to meet your brother. Um, if you want to meet my brother, go on my channel and just look up the Super Bros Podcast. Um, if you look up the Super Bros Podcast, I did a podcast with my brother years ago. And if you want to kind of get an idea of, you know, how he is and everything, just look up that podcast on my channel. And my, bro my brother was on there. Um, but my brother is, uh, I would say he's camera shy. So you probably won't, I mean, you probably won't even see a picture of him at any point. Um, he wouldn't even let me like take a picture and post it to my Twitter of us. So, <laughs> but no, he's a, he's a great guy though. He's a great guy. Um, obviously, I, lo I love my brother to death. Um, ha uh, is that Halifax? Halifax? Shout out to the two other donations. Says great live stream. Please play Danger uh, by Hero Anime. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I'll play that next, as soon as this one's over. We got about three more minutes on this one. Um, is Nintendo getting its own exclusive fighter from Capcom? Uh, maybe not exclusive, but I, I think that they would probably get a, a Capcom fighting game at some point, like another Capcom fighting game, but I don't know about exclusives. Um... T dude says so means Nintendo Dragon Quest Builders for Nintendo Switch is powered by Sony's Interactive Entertainment, um, Pyre Engine. I didn't know that. Is it? I saw you link that, but I didn't know that's what Dragon Quest Builders is built on. Interesting. Uh, Domino says, would you suggest um, Mario Kart or Splatoon 2? I like both of the originals. Um, I would suggest both of them to be honest. It just depends on what you like more. I mean, if you like racing more. Thing, you know roll with that but I mean you know I, I would honestly suggest both of them if you're looking at online play they obviously both have they both have great online play Splatoon 2 is more active so if you're looking for the more active online play in terms of updates and content being added then I'd go with more, I'd go with Splatoon 2 that is the more active constantly updated game whereas Mario Kart 8 Deluxe just gets patch updates really and not even very often they just every now and then every maybe like there's only been a few updates for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe so I mean, I guess I would go with Splatoon 2 if you want the continued content. You know, they add new guns all the time and all that stuff. So, so yeah, man. <laughs> Although, I just literally paid OJ to play music. <laughs> well, it's something that I've added in. Um, I don't, you guys don't have, obviously, you guys don't have to donate or anything like that. I'm not trying to say that. It's just, just something that I've added in because you guys were donating anyway. So, um, you know, I was looking at other ways to help out the stream in terms of, like, you know, fan interaction. And uh, a lot of suggestions were, well, if someone donates you know maybe they can request a track you know so that's the only reason why that i did that um not that like like i said you guys donated even before i even added that but i just i just added that in as a, an extra little thing you know to help with fan interaction that's all um Jose, did you notice the robot kit needs six joy cons i didn't notice the robot kit needs six joy cons um i think you from every single thing you only need two joy cons per uh, actual uh thing but, um, and no, and I think the robot kit, you don't need six Joy-Cons. There was two in his hand and he was playing the game like this. So I don't, I don't think you need six Joy-Cons. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think Nintendo thinks that most people have six Joy-Cons lying around. Um, so yeah. 
Yeah, the robo kit only needs two joy cons. I highly doubt that the ro that the that the robot needs. I don't. I didn't even see six joy cons on there because he had two in his hand and that was it. And that was how it was controlling the game. Unless there was joy cons mashed other places, but no, I I highly highly doubt the robot kit needs six joy cons. That's ridiculous. Um, how the facts this player since that track is from Digital Devil Saga. You, you, um, if you needed to know, Digital Devil Saga, is it? Which one? It says the pants. Hmm. I don't know what you're. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, Halifax, the one that you're talking about. I was like, wait a minute, that was from Panzer Dragoon Orda or Panzer Dragoon Saga. Which, by the way, Panzer Dra Dragoon Saga needs a remaster on the Switch. Please get that game on the Switch. Please, somebody, get that game on. That game really needs to come to the Switch. That'd be a great game for Switch. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get your song up here. Um, let's see here. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, Digital Devil Saga. Okay, yeah, I see it right here. Atlas PlayStation Two, Shin Megami Tensei. Let's go. So, guys, this is uh, this is Danger by Itro Anime or Anime, and um, it's from the Digital Devil Saga, guys. So, thank you so much, Halifax, for the donation, and also hopefully enjoy the music. Um, let's see here. Is the Switch already in the top three greatest consoles of all time? Um, I don't know if it's in the top three greatest consoles of all time, but I think it's in the top three greatest Nintendo systems of all time. Like, if you want to just talk about, like, Nintendo home consoles, like, I mean, if you're going to split it up, I think, I don't think it's reached the top Nintendo portables of all time. I mean, maybe. I would probably say like the top Nintendo portable of all time is obviously you know the 3D or the the DS, and then I'd probably say next is probably the like just not my own opinion, but just like overall I, I would think probably the Game Boy people would think, and then maybe the GBA, but that's just going by sales. Uh, my personal opinion is I would probably put as my, my favorite portable of all time, dedicated portable, is the 3DS, and then after that I would probably put the DS, and then I would put the Game Boy Advance. Just my own personal opinion. Um, if you're talking about home consoles, um, I would say number one is definitely the Super Nintendo. And then I would say number two is either the NES or the GameCube for me. Um, if you're counting like backwards compatibility, I mean, there's so many different things. It's like, it's like, okay, well, is the Wii better than the GameCube? Because the GameCube, because the Wii plays GameCube games, you know, and it also does that. So it just depends on like how you qualify things. Um, but I would just say it's a little bit too early, but if I was just to give like a overall general impression, I would definitely put like the Switch is already in the, for me personally, the Switch is already in the top half of Nintendo systems, like the top four, I would say easily the top four. Um, and the reason why, even though it's only been one year, the software output that we've got from first and third parties, because I count indie developers, you know, it has been very good. Like whereas with the previous Nintendo systems, you would have to wait maybe two to three years to play the amount of games that we've got. We've already got a major RPG. We've already got major Mario game. We've already got a major Zelda game. We've already got major online um, online games. We've got new IPs like ARMS. We've got Splatoon 2. We've got just so many different games where you usually have to wait two to three years to get that amount of games from Nintendo. Um, in terms of first party, we literally got all of that in the first year. We got Pokemon tournament. They they hit like every single genre: RPG, action, adventure, platformer. Even with their own first party, and that doesn't even include that, like indies. So I would just say the way that it's going, yeah, I would put it in the in the top half. Um, I don't know about top three yet, but man, it's close, dude. I mean, to be honest, I already like it more than the N64. You know, um, but that's just me personally. Like, if you look at the total amount of games, obviously the N64 has more at this point so i don't know if everyone's gonna agree with that but for me absolutely it's in the top it's top four for sure top four for sure so so yeah man um so sega can't remaster panzer dragoon saga because the source code was lost it would need to be a complete remake with a new game engine which is fine uh shout out to kudo tengetsu for the uh, five dollar donation thank you so much i do appreciate that kudo and uh yeah we would need a brand new uh brand new engine but they should do it they should do it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Make, I mean, you could take Unreal Engine 4. I mean, Unity. 
There's all sorts of easy engines that you could make for a remake. So yeah, man, go ahead. They, they should do it that way. Maybe maybe not a you know straight uh, port, but they can get a remake going. I don't think it'd be too hard. It's not a ridiculously uh, complicated game. Um, so yeah. But thank you for the $5 donation. I do appreciate that. Um, I'll get you guys' thoughts on this. The Super Nintendo, Nintendo, uh, Nintendo, so the NES, then the GameCube. Yeah. That's, that's a good list. That's a good list. Um... Yeah, I think by the time though, by the, by the time it's all said and done, the Switch will be number one. I think by the time it's all said and done, um, just because be, the amount of games that's coming. But the reason why I think that it's going to be, it's going to beat the N sixty four, because the N sixty four, you 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 can't. The N sixty four just had no, it had no, um, it had no RPGs, man. It didn't have enough RPGs. Didn't have enough RPGs, guys. Um, just wanted uh, shout out to George with the total donation says just wanted to donate more lol. Thank you I do appreciate that. So guys, we've got about maybe three minutes left So let me get some more. I'll try to get as many questions in as as much as I can um, And we'll go from there. He said the worst was the Wii U. Mm, I don't put the Wii U the worst I, I like the Wii U more than some of the other systems out there, but that's just my opinion on the matter um, Don't let Mr. T hear that. I know Mr. T loves the N64, but Mr. T likes you know platformers and you know and Mr. T likes platformers 3d platformers more than i do like he i mean if, if if you're a big 3d platformer fan then obviously the n64 is golden right banjo 2 and all that stuff like i wasn't big into banjo 2 when i was a kid um the eugene 3 2 1 1 it says player says when you technically say that the nintendo labo is kind of like the uh uh, tablet raspberry pi build your own pc for kids learn how to code i mean i didn't know what the uh, raspberry pi is um but yeah I, I would think that the nintendo labo is just a, another side thing i think nintendo labo could even be like the replacement for their quirky experiment of the wii u i mean on the nintendo eu site nintendo actually replaced the wii u tab with nintendo labo so nintendo is actually obviously taking it as their own little side experiment the smartest thing about nintendo labo is that it's not the main part of the system that's the biggest thing that what makes Nintendo Labo a good investment because one it's not a gamepad that costs a hundred dollars to put onto your system and two it's cardboard with some software and three it's not the main part of your system it's a complete side thing so if it blows up and it becomes a good thing Nintendo's going to be in the money more extra money if it ends up failing it's just it's just cardboard with some mini game software you can repurpose the software put it out on the Nintendo Switch and you can recycle the cardboard into other things. Literally, they can recycle the cardboard into other product or into other boxes for their stuff. And they can take the software that they made and repurpose it for Nintendo Switch or any other system that they want to put out on. Or heck, maybe even Nintendo uh, licenses it and puts it on PC, some of that software, you know, or something like that. So uh, you never know. So to me, it's a win-win. It's, it's a no-brainer to try it, you know, just to try something different. That's all. Uh, Shout-outs to uh, Sabbath with the $5 donation. It says Final Fantasy VI uh, troops march on, and um, are you gonna play the Darkest Dungeon? Uh, I'll see if I can play Darkest Dungeon. I don't know. I didn't get a review code for it, but we'll see about that, man. I just it, it's it's hard for me to play some of this, uh, all these games that are coming out, dude. Um, it's just been getting more and more uh, busy on the channel. Um, okay, so this has to be the last one, guys, and I might I can't make it throughout the whole thing, otherwise because I have to go pick up my daughter right now. So I'll play a little bit of this Final Fantasy VI, and I'll answer questions for about a minute or two more, guys. Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy six troops. I'll play this next time that you're here, Sabbath. I'll play this one next time for sure, too. Troops, troops march on. Okay. All right. All right. I like this one. Great try. Yeah, I, I don't hate on anybody who likes the N64. If you like the N64, man, all power to you. One thing that I've learned is to stop hating on what other people like. That's one thing that that's one valuable lesson that I've learned. That is to stop hating on what other people like. And don't make videos on what other people like. And if you don't like it and if you're not playing it, don't make videos complaining about that crap. You know, that's another thing that I've really learned as I get older. Don't waste time on that. Waste like spend your time on things that you like. Spend your time on things that you love. You know, don't waste your time on things that you don't like. Um so yeah. Um, Lewis says um, the Wii brought me back full force, and I like what I've played on the Switch. Yeah, it's great. Um, the Joy-Con inside the backpack looks like the parts are moving through the Joy-Con IR camera. Yeah, it's some crazy stuff going on. 
Why do you have headphones on if we can hear the music? Um, I had headphones on. What does it matter? Why do you have headphones on if you can hear the music? Because I want to hear the music too. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, did you catch the Nippon Ichi um, love event? Yeah, I did, I did catch it. Um, it was pretty cool. I mean, it wasn't anything crazy. It was pretty short. Um, this guy, a one remake, seems to be the biggest thing out of there. They have a project, like some type of project that they're working on, a horror game or something like that. You know, not terribly exciting, but some 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 okay stuff. Um, I would like the Final Fantasy one through six collection on the Switch. That would be more like Virtual Console, more so than anything. Um, Jeffrey Rock said, "I love I love horror games. I really want Evil Within on the Switch to be portable. Yeah, Evil Within would be great. I'm hope I'm hoping Evil Within comes." Pokemon this year or next year? I'm leaning towards this year. Maybe. We'll see. Project Nightmare. Yeah, Project Nightmare. All right, guys. So that wraps it up for this one here. Um, basically, that finished off the song. So I've got to go. I'm terribly sorry about the short live stream. That was only about 45 minutes just because of the issues that we had. Remember, power cycle your router, guys. I'm looking at my, my stuff here. Dude, I dropped zero frames, and I'm running at such an efficiency. And I know that I was dropping frames on my previous live streams just a little bit. So I really got to remember to power cycle because everything goes clean uh, when you power cycle. So <laughs> for the most part, we had a little desync issue, but others, uh, outside of that, it seemed like things were good. So I'm terribly sorry about the live stream, guys. Um, I'll try to find that stick it to the man code if I can, and I'll give away that code on the next live stream or on Twitter or something like that for 35,000 subscribers. And remember, uh, let your if you know if you have friends online and stuff and they haven't heard of my channel, make sure you uh, let them know once we hit 40,000 subscribers, which should happen on the pace that I'm going in the next two months. If we hit 40,000 subscribers before that, you know, that'd be great. Um, and I'll be giving away a Super Nintendo Classic. And that'll be worldwide. So um, if Amazon has it, I'll ship it out. Or I'll buy one from Amazon to send to uh, to European nations or to Australia or to wherever you're at. So it will be a, a worldwide deal. Okay, guys? So uh, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate that. And um, we'll see you guys later. Um, if you missed some of this live stream, it will be up in about an hour and a half. It'll be up on the channel for you to rewatch. And I'll also have another video later um, talking about some of the news here, but in a more compact form. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And we'll see you guys for the next one. Peace out.